course, it's just about the same. It's a stage one map? Yeah. yeah. And you said no check engine codes or it does have a few? Uh, no, not anymore. Okay. <clears throat> it used to do it a couple, almost a year ago now, but my trailer doesn't drive it as much anymore. Okay. Um, so it just hasn't. Yeah, I think much, so. you can uninstall the access port and then you could sell it. Yeah. Um, make some money back. Someone will want it. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's a stock downpipe? Yeah, uh, upgraded downpipe. Okay. So it has slow. full exhaust. Okay. Um, except headers, I think. Okay. Stock headers and then intake. Nice. Everything else is stock. And uh, top mount. Yep. Yeah, that's slightly different. Cool. The, the original one, the <clears throat> like blue. Mm -hmm. Classic. Yeah. Yep. So, what was it running boost wise if you were to get on it? Um, it was like 16. Okay. Yeah. I've seen these do okay up to 18. Yeah, same. Um, so that's what it used to be at. Okay. And when it first had the original motor in and we had the access port on, it was doing like 18. And I felt, I mean, I never drove it because it was a long time ago, but my dad and my sister said it felt a lot better than it did right now. Okay. Yeah, we can do, um, <clears throat> we can do all the deletes as well. Yeah. Um, like the secondary air. It w doesn't mean you have to remove it. It's just whenever you do, you won't get the limp modes. Yeah. It's it's a lot of work to... That's not a lot of work to remove, but the valves on both yeah, sides, they're a pain. The yeah, they're a pain to get to. Um, <clears throat> but what happens is with age, they those valves gunk up mm -hmm. and it throws those codes. So if, if in fact, it, you know, it does gunk up over time, it won't cause you a limp mode. Because yeah, that's what it used to do, um, just limp mode after limp mode, like mm -hmm. open throttle, and then it would just bog, and then it would throw a limp mode. Cool. Reminds me of my car. I saw the, the Beamer go for sale. Uh, yeah, a buyer came yesterday, and he he pretty much bought it. He really? just wants to come pick right. it up on Monday. Like the rounded tips? I like this one. It's... I was driving here, like, on those twisty roads. Mm -hmm. It's so Hi. slow, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah, because you can actually, you can apply throttle and yeah. turn. It's all in the sounds, because it just sounds really good. Full throttle and stuff. It's still a five-speed, right? So it's going to be, it's going to feel pretty good, because you can rip through the gears, yeah, wind it out. It's pretty long. They're really long. Yeah. Cruising on the on the freeway, I was doing like 80 and 5th and it was just chilling. Mm-hmm. I love it with these newer cars. You don't need <laughs> green connectors. You don't need a jumper. You just plug it in. It's a CAN bus. The newer cars are on CAN bus. Much better system. Yeah, I don't have to crawl underneath and hook up this mitt. Connectors and stuff. Yep. I got this for Christmas. Christmas gift like a couple years ago. I don't think I've ever used it. Maybe once. I got this for a Christmas gift like years ago. I don't know. I may have used it once. Here, hold that. But it's actually like a jumper pack. It's pretty cool. It's super compact. So you feel well, wherever that went we'll roll back later pick up that charger so you just plug it in that's the charging ports yeah mm -hmm. they sell them everywhere like costco um online Let me turn it on first, figure out how to do that. All right, try to start it. She lives. Nice. Love it. I know. Little pocket jumper. Get a light. 
Can you roll back a little bit? I think there's a charger under the car. All right, you're good. You're in fourth. Yeah. Can you get in third? Don't floor it, but just kind of try to like accelerate a bit. I might tell you to pull off. Yeah, I'd get off of it. Um, for some reason, we get into some boost and the air fuel sensor reading doesn't go richer. It goes leaner. And so that's an interesting one. I don't know why it's doing that. On wide open throttle on the access port. Okay. It would hit pounds but a far would dip the lowest it would go it was like 11.5 so 11.5 is good yeah. i don't know why here it's telling me that it's not going down so we'll we'll keep off the throttle for now to see what i can figure out after this small bend with the houses we could try to get into it a little bit again it seemed like it was fine last time. It was like at first hesitant, but then it picked up. That's good. Oh, the brakes. It looks like rotors. Yeah, it took it a second to uh, figure itself out, so we're gonna we're gonna dial that in. not bad again it's still low boost we're at like 14.6 because i gave it low wastegate for now um no knock that i can tell of but again we're not pushing it yet the engine load is a little low 2.07 i feel like this car calculates engine load a little differently from the older models at this 14 six ish psi other cars calculate the load to almost three um so I'll, I'll account for that in the tune i can rescale where the fueling comes on because for example in your car only after like a load of two do i enrich in it for example but this car it looks like i'll just need to add more fuel earlier so again it's just a slightly different ecu setup i guess the way it calculates stuff that's apparently what our, the guy that put in the motor in the first place. Okay. Uh, he told us as soon as he, we put the motor in, he was like, well, all you guys need is a tune. It's going to throw off the load a little bit. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Um, left or right? Left. So from factory, they tune the ECU to a max load of like 2.5. Whereas every time I tune, I in, increase the load to like 3.5 or a 4. That's around that like 20 plus PSI range. Stinky. I think it might be the turbo. Doesn't look like any apparent oil leaks, but there's a little oil residue here and there. Oh, I think that's a. I saw that last time. Yeah, it's nothing crazy. I actually didn't, didn't even check this looks fine there we go so it's um the most notorious culprit is this line there's a fuel pressure regulator and there's yeah, this yeah. little hose and it goes into here so it looks like it's on there seems fine 
Okay. Yeah, I think it's just we need some adjustments to, to dial it in. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen such a, a difference because I put in the typical 2.5 numbers and it being a 2.0, it's, yeah, just needs a little love. It's definitely smoother yeah, than it was before. That. Way smoother. scary now <laughs> on these turns and it's gonna be a lot of downhill a half currently yeah it still only gave us 15 so it's a little more than before I think it's just the, the wastegate boost controller is a little weaker on these factory cars so I'll turn it up more Pulls better. Pull out. Go ahead. All right, you're good. <laughs> Get that massage going. Just want to see what she does. give a super quick recap on Joel's sister's car. It was a 2011 WRX. Pretty much what Joel told me was the car at one point had a 2.5, <clears throat> like a EJ25 that came with those WRXs. And then uh, they were running like a Cobb stage one or two for a while and that engine blew up. And so they swapped in a EJ20X um, I don't know exactly what year it came out of, but it was a two liter, pretty much. Everything fit with the previous 2.5 wiring harness. And I guess what uh, issues I ran into today was the, in, the engine seems to generate load differently, right? And it's possible that there's very slight compression differences between the 2.5 and 2.0, again, I didn't research all that, but as I tuned, I saw that the engine was under more load than the ECU thought. So a 2.5 usually, let's say at around a load of two grams per revolution is at like fairly low boost. Um, and so you're like, you're very conservative with the fueling and you're still focusing on fuel economy. This car at like 1.7, you were already kind of coming into boost. Whereas let's say other cars, other a 2.5 and the load the ECU sees, they would be coming into boost closer to that too. And so pretty much what I did, I had to just rescale uh, the timing tables, the fueling tables, the boost uh, compensation tables and all that to account for 
kind of the car actually being under more load and wide, under wide open throttle when we were hitting a, a, towards the end like 17 psi i think the car was only showing a maximum of 2.7 uh, grams per revolution whereas other cars that i've tuned at that level that are pushing that kind of boost and timing and stuff they would be hitting easily the three 3.5 and so things to consider if you're tuning um start maybe more conservatively or if you see that the car is leaning out um it doesn't always mean that it's a physical issue it just could be a byproduct of the way the ecu is trying to calculate load because i know a lot of people build these hybrid builds with ecus and engines and heads from different cars so just some food for thought thanks for tuning in Gotta love the hatch.